Hey everyone, Leander here. And today we are going to learn how to make a classic RPG style battle sequence. So let's get started. I've got this battle folder here on my desktop and if I click on that, we can see a whole bunch of files that we'll be using in this tutorial. And you can download all of these files by clicking on the link below this video. So please go ahead and do that. And then you can just follow right along. So if we look a little more carefully, we can see we have a hero and we have an enemy. And we actually have different versions of them doing different things. And we'll look at that in more detail later. But let's just go ahead right now and open up our HTML file in our favorite text editor. I'm using Sublime Text. Go ahead and use whatever you like. And let's also open up the same file in our favorite browser. And let's get to work. So I'm going to give this file a title. We'll call it Battle. And make a little space here. And then inside the body, let's go ahead and put our hero image. And let's give that an ID of hero. Okay, there he is. And I'm just going to copy and paste that and switch out hero with enemy. And there's our enemy. Next, to add on the background, we're going to make a div. And let's give that div an ID. Let's call it scene. And this is actually going to have all of the other important elements in this battle inside of it. So let's go ahead and grab those images we just put on, cut them out, and paste them inside of this scene div. Save that, and of course, it doesn't look any different yet. What we need to do next is style the scene and add on the background image that we have right here as the background image. And so let's put in some style tags up in the head. And in my past tutorials, I was putting the style tags inside of the body because that was the popular thing to do at the time. But uh, nowadays, I think most people are putting them back up inside the head. It doesn't really matter that much. We're just going to put them in the head for today. All right, so here is our scene style. And let's give it a, an absolute position for now. That's going to change, but for now it's OK. We'll put it at uh, left 0, top 0. And we got to put on that background image. There it is, OK. Next, let's position our hero. So go up here and hero. And I'm just going to copy and paste the position info from scene in here for now and save that. Whoa, that looks weird. OK, I think I know what's going on. We have to go back to our scene and give our scene a width and a height and make that width and height the same as the real dimensions of our background image. So if I just hover over our background image, I can see the dimensions. It's 1,000 by 563. So that means a width of 1,000 pixels and a height of 563 pixels. So let's try that. Some spaces here too. Okay, that's better. And of course, we don't want our hero way up there, so 
Let me bring him down a bit. Uh, let's make the top 120 pixels and let's make left 20 pixels for our hero. All right, that looks like it might be okay. We have to also position our enemy. So let's do that now. And I'm just going to copy and paste this info right in here and change it around. And for the enemy's left position, I'm going to try 600 pixels and let's try zero for the top position. Okay, that's pretty good. Actually, though, I want the enemy to be a little higher up. So I'm going to give him a negative top position. We'll make a negative 40 pixels and see how that looks like. All right, that's better. Next, let's make the background color of the body black. Okay, that looks all right. But if we zoom out, we see that this scene from our game is stuck in the upper left-hand corner. And it would be really nice if we could center it horizontally in the window so that it stayed in the center no matter what. And now there's a pretty easy way to do that. So here's how we do that. We go back and change some things with our scene div. So first let's add, let's take away the position and the left and top and let's add display table and below that margin zero auto and voila our background our scene div is now in the center of our window and if we adjust our window it stays in the center there is a little bit of a problem though, and that is we still have our hero and our enemy absolutely positioned relative to the whole window. But there's a trick we can do to make it so that they're positioned not relative to the whole window, but relative to this scene div. And to make them get positioned like that, all we have to do is go back into our scene style and add position and instead of absolute we use relative and what this will do is it will make everything that's inside of this div so these two images right now it will make their absolute positioning be relative to where the scene div is so let's see what that looks like And there they go. So now, instead of being positioned relative to the window, these guys are positioned relative to the scene div. So they're going to stay in their spots within this background, no matter what I do. So this is a pretty handy way to center everything within the window. Now let's add a menu so that the player can choose what to do in the battle. So for that, we're going to make a div, give it an ID menu, and we'll make a little space inside. Then we'll go up in our style and we'll add menu and give it a position. Absolute. And left, 120. We'll try 120. And 420 for the top. And the width will be 700 pixels in height. How about 130 pixels? Next, let's give it a background color and we'll use RGBA. We'll make it dark blue and we'll give it an alpha of 0.7. So it'll be a little bit transparent. 
And then we'll give it a border, two pixels solid white. And we'll give it a border radius. That'll make the edges round. And border radius will be 10 pixels for each corner. So let's see what that looks like. All right, not bad. Next, let's go ahead and put some choices for the player in the menu. And so we'll add a paragraph. And in there, we'll put the question, what will you do? And below that, we're going to make an unordered list. So we use UL for that tag. And you'll see what that looks like. And inside the unordered list, we'll put list items, two list items, that's LI. And inside of the first list item, we're going to put fight and run will be the other one. And these will be our player's two choices for this battle. Pretty simple. Let's save that and take a look at it. Okay, yeah, a little hard to see. Definitely needs some work. So let's go ahead and style those elements. First, let's make the font size bigger and let's make the color white. So we'll do that for everything inside the menu. So let's go into the style from menu and we'll add color white. And let's give it a font size of 22 pixels. Okay, next, well, let's just see what that looks like first. Hmm, pretty good. I think we need to add some padding on the left side, though. So why don't we do that? We'll add, not passing, we'll add padding. Padding left, and let's make it 40 pixels. See how that looks. Okay, not bad. And we'll go ahead and change the font family to sans serif. Okay. Next, I'd like to change the margins. So I want the margins, the, the top and bottom margins for all of these lines for the question and the choices to be the same. So what we're going to do is we'll go down and we'll create a style section for paragraph, unordered list, and list items, all of them. And in there, we'll add margin top 10 pixels and margin bottom 10 pixels. Let's see how that looks. OK. Looking better. I'd also like to take off this bullet point uh, at the beginning of each list item. So to do that, we style the list items like this, and we say list style none. And that'll take off that bullet point. Next, when the player hovers over these choices, I want it to look like a link, so have an underline appear. And I'd like, instead of having this cursor, I'd like to have a pointer instead. So let's, let's add that. So what we'll do is we'll do uh, list item hover and text decoration, when you hover over, will become underline. And the cursor will be oh, the cursor will be a pointer. So let's see what that looks like. Okay, nice. As you can see, we've got the nice underline there when we hover, and the cursor is a pointer. All right, so that about wraps it up for part one of this tutorial series on how to make a classic RPG-style battle sequence using basic web programming. In part two, we're going to start working on the sound and the action for the sequence. So I hope you'll join me for that. Until then, take care and happy coding.